Well, hello everyone and welcome to the Emma Gardner channel. Today we're going to be doing the first installment of many on Homesteading 101, Preserving the Harvest. Today we're going to be harvesting beans. And so before we get started with this course, I'm going to give you the option to jump to a section that might best interest you. So click on the side here, which one you would prefer to watch. That way you're not watching something that A, you already know, or B, doesn't interest you. Or if you don't care, just sit back, relax, and the video will just play and you can go in order of what I do. So the first method of food preservation we're going to talk about is canning. And when it comes to canning, you need one tool and one tool specifically, and that is a pressure canner. Without a pressure canner, I would suggest not doing this. A lot of times people uh, try to skirt around the issue and use a hot water bath or they try to use a pressure cooker. Those are two completely separate things from a pressure canner. And everyone's going to tell you that the safest way to ensure that you have edible food months after preservation is by using a pressure canner. And I totally agree. It is something you definitely don't want to risk with. And food poisoning is something that I definitely don't wish on anybody. So make sure you have a pressure canner. They're not that expensive. A lot of people say that, oh, you have to buy the highest quality one that costs $300. No, if that's something that suits you, great, use that. That's going to be for more of your advanced canners. There's very minute things that make differences and that's what makes the price different. When it comes to canners, if you're a beginner, just get the cheapest one. I've seen one at Walmart for about $65. That one uh, has worked for me great without any problems at all and it's going to do fine for you as well. Now, the next thing you're going to need is cans. When it comes to cans, uh, or jars really, it's personal. Um, so I like to have large jars and small jars. Depending on how many beans um, you wanna open, it's really nice to have alternating, alternating sizes, but you wanna make sure that you pick all one size can because when we get into canning, the amount of time that it takes to can, let's say a pint jar versus a quart jar, the times are different. So you do want to pick, let's say, 10 quarts or 10 pints and you can um, and you can do them all at the same time all with the same size so i'm going to be doing pint jars for now because i'm doing cut beans now the next thing you're going to want to do is get beans that are washed and cut you can also do them whole but they i find that they aren't really space efficient but if that's something that you like it's definitely a total it's definitely a total doable thing so as you see here, I've just taken my beans and I'm doing yellow beans, but if you have green beans, flat beans, um, purple beans, it's not going to matter. The type of bean is not going to uh, change this, this process at all. But for me, I just wanted to get some nice chunks here. Uh, these are about one, one and a half inch cut segments here. Make sure they're well washed and, uh, and then just uh, make sure they're basically just drip dried. It's not going to matter all that much, but you want to make sure that they are washed to make sure there's no um, leftover bugs or grass or dirt because that stuff can harbor a lot of bacteria that can spoil later on. So you want to make sure they are washed. I like to wash them in hot water. Some people say cold water is fine. I like to err on the side of caution. I wash them with hot water that's uh, a little bit a little bit hotter than you could probably stand leaving your hand under. And I just wash them underneath that and uh, that way I can, I can be a little bit more sure that what I'm eating later on down the road is safe. And so the next thing we're going to do is just prepare the canner here. So they always come with an inner tray here. You wanna make sure this is in because it prevents the cans from um, coming in contact with the bottom of the canner. That can cause rocking and cracking if you don't have this in here. So just make sure that's in there because the last thing you want is a cracked jar in here. That's very, um, number one, dangerous, and number two, it's uh, definitely not fun to clean up. So now the next thing we're going to do is fill this with water, and you want to make sure that you fill this with only three quarts of water. And I'm using a pint, uh, just a, a pint measuring, and there's two pints in a quart, so I'm gonna fill up with six of these into uh, the canner here. So next we're gonna do is we're going to prep our jars. And with the jars, you're going to wanna to make sure they're hot and that makes them sterile. So I put mine in the dishwasher on high for about 15 minutes. 
I also have my rings and my lids here in some very hot water as well, sanitizing them. Now, uh, the next thing you want to do is get your beans. Um, I'm cold packing, which means they are raw. It gives them a lot crisper, garden fresh flavor when it's all said and done. So if you choose to cold pack, you're going to need to actually really physically pack. And so I like to get my fingers in there. I have washed my hands. Make sure that you do that as well. Um, I've uh, done this enough times to know that um, <laughs> there's quite a few steps in canning, but the payoff is, is really, really worth it. So you want to cram these down in here um, so that you minimize the amount of air gaps and just put enough beans in there to basically come up to the top rim or the bottom rim on the mason jar. And so there we go. Now we have our beans in the mason jar. Now what we're going to do is fill this with hot boiling water. We're going to uh, put the water in the mason jar. And then the next step is extremely crucial. Make sure you don't pass that lower rim again on the mason jar. We're going to take, this is just an icing knife. Uh, it's plastic, you want something plastic. Do not use metal, do not use a knife. I see that so often. They use a knife to get the air out of the jars. You want to get the air from around the beans. Push the beans down, work it around because there's air trapped in there and that is your worst enemy because air hosts bacteria. And what does bacteria do? It spoils your produce. So I like to make sure that I've worked all the air out of there. I just kind of jam them down, work my work my knife around here, my icing knife around here, and uh, that gets all the air out. Now the next thing you want to do is also very crucial. Take a dry rag or a towel or whatever you have on hand, dry the rim because that can have water that prevents it from, from uh, sealing properly. Take your hot ring and your hot lid, stick that on, and two finger strength here. What I mean by two finger strength is don't wrench on it. You know, don't really crank down hard. Take two fingers and tighten. If you can't go it anymore, that's perfect. As you can see, we have that done. I'm just gonna finish up the rest, and then we're going to turn our canner on. So we have our stove on high, and now all we're going to do is take our jars here and set them in the pressure canner. Now you wanna make sure that none of them are touching. I obviously only have four. That's all I had enough beans for for this um, canning session. So what I'm going to do is just make sure they're equal distance apart, but if you have more in here, make sure they're not touching the walls and make sure they're not touching each other because steam has to be able to get around each individual jar. Now the next thing we're gonna do is put our top on. When it comes to putting the top on, there's a little trick here. Now you, you want to make sure this reaches a boil. And when it reaches a boil, you wanna let it boil for 10 minutes. And you'll see steam coming out of the steam escape here, the steam valve. That lets you know it's ready, but you have to wait 10 minutes because it gets all the extra air out of the canner. Then after 10 minutes of steam coming out of the steam valve, then you can put your weight on. So when that happens, uh, we can then begin the canning process. All right, it's been 10 minutes after, uh, well, it's been 10 minutes since the steam started coming out of the steam valve here. And our PSI is at zero. Now you don't wanna put your hand near this steam. It is very hot, so be careful. Do not burn yourself. We're going to take our weight and put the weight right on the, uh, the pressure valve there, or on the steam valve. As you can see, there is a seal because our, uh, our steam pressure valve has come up, making a vacuum. And we're going to watch the PSI meter here. These are really nice to have because they're very accurate and they help you um, just uh, eliminate that error that, that can be made 
because when you're canning, it's very important to have the right uh, PSI, pounds per square inch. So we're going for 10 pounds per square inch, and we have to hold that for 20 minutes. Now, it depends on the, t uh, the size of cans you're using. Since we're using pint containers, if you're using quart containers, you want to do 25 minutes at 10 PSI. Now, you cannot start timing until it has reached the correct PSI. So I'm not even timing this right now. I'm just letting it get up there and it'll take a while because it has to build up pressure. So I'm just uh, letting this go here. But once it reaches 10 PSI, you start counting. Time yourself 20 minutes for pints and 25 minutes for quarts. All right, we're at 10 pounds per square inch now. We're going to start the timer now for 20 minutes and you're going to notice that the, uh, the PSI will fluctuate um, depending on the heat. So you need to make sure you continuously check this. Do not go watch television for 20 minutes. Stay in the kitchen because if this drops below 10, you're going to have to restart. And that's the worst part about canning is you have to maintain 10 PSI for beans. It's very important. So we're going to watch this, make sure it doesn't drop below 10. If it does, we'll simply turn the heat up a little bit, raise the PSI. And then, um, you know, then we'll, uh, we'll basically play with it back and forth for 20 minutes until we get there. And it's, it's, not, it's not going to drop on you like a rock. You know, it's not going to go from 10 to 5 in a matter of seconds. It'll, you know, you'll notice that it's starting to drop. So right now we're just at 10 and that's perfect. So let's keep it there for 20 minutes. All right, the time is up and I'm all, all I'm going to do is just turn the heat off. You want to turn the heat off and then take the pot and remove it from the burner. I just slid it to the back burner there. So now it's off the heat. You're going to let it just cool. You want to let it cool. And when you know it's depressurized is when the pressure valve drops. You want to let the pressure go because if you remove this, it's highly pressurized steam. You're going to be very badly burned. So do not try to tamper with this until it is cool. It's going to do its own thing. And uh, you can already see the pressure starting to drop. It's going to drop and then cool. And you want to let it set for about 10 to 15 minutes before you touch it. That way you know there's no way of there being any pressure or steam that's going to burn you. So the steam valve just dropped showing that the PSI is at zero. And that lets you know that it's safe to at least begin touching. However, that does not mean that the steam is still safe. So you do want to wear an oven mitt when you remove the weight because there can still be steam in here and it's something that you just don't want to risk. I mean, would you rather have third degree burns or wear an oven mitt? I mean, really? <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, see, like, a, I don't know if you can see the steam there, but there is still steam coming out. And had you removed that with your hand, that would have definitely, most likely burnt you. And I'm not, I'm not saying it would have, but it's something I don't want to risk. Now you want to be careful here. Since this is still hot, there's going to be steam here. Now it's not going to be pressurized steam, but there still, will still be steam rising. So I do have two oven mitts to open the pressure cooker or the pressure canner. See all that steam? There you go. <laughs> See, and that's why you definitely want to wear gloves be, or oven mitts because you definitely don't want to get burned. Now it is safe to take off your oven mitts here and you can remove the cans. These cans will be very hot. So I seriously suggest getting one of these is so cool. It's a jar gripper and you can still see the, uh, the water in there boiling. So they are very, very hot still. All right, we're just gonna let those cool and there you go. So now they're out, we're just gonna let them set there until they're totally cool and then you can store them on a shelf. They're gonna store there for about a year, year and a half. You can store them a little bit longer, um, but I find that it's best to eat them around the year, year and a half because that's, uh, I mean, if they last that long, that is because they're super delicious. But um, assuming you don't touch yours in a year and a half, it's best to uh, give them a pitch because you really don't wanna risk getting food poisoning. Now the next form of food preservation is pickling. When it comes to pickling, you don't need to be too concerned about the canning process because it's something that everybody can do. You don't need a canner. All you need is just a pan with some boiling water uh, deep enough to 
to submerge the, the jars, which we'll get into later in this video. So we're gonna go through the ingredients because it's, uh, it's very simple. And the brine is actually what's going to preserve your beans because the brine is very highly acidic. So the acid in the brine is going to prevent any bacteria from coming in. Now you still do want to can it. I would highly, highly recommend canning it because of the fact that it does get all that air out and it really um, helps to prolong the life of the jars. So you need some beans. Any beans are going to work. These are flat beans, but if you want to use yellow beans, purple beans, green beans, uh, whatever kind of bean you have, that's going to work for you. Now I do leave them whole. I do not cut them up because they seem to preserve a little bit better. Uh, they kind of hold their shape better. They look a lot more, a little more presentable, but you can cut them if you want. I just leave them whole, so that's up to you. You're going to need some dill. I just have a little, kind of a handful of dill. Can't really give you an amount, just some, some dill weed. Then you're also going to need optional. This is red pepper. This gives it kind of a cool bite to it. You're going to need one clove of garlic two and a half cups of water, a quarter cup of salt. I'm using pink Himalayan salt. You can use sea salt. You can use regular, regular table salt. It does not matter, just a quarter cup of that. You're also going to need distilled vinegar. You need two cups of distilled vinegar. Um, you don't want uh, to really overdo it on the vinegar because it can be one of those things that if you have too much vinegar, it really overtakes and you want a nice balance. So you want about as much water as you do vinegar. Next, you're gonna need your jars. The jar size does not matter, obviously, because, um, well, I mean, it does because it has to be submerged under water, but just basically, you don't wanna pickle more than you can eat within the course of three or four weeks, because once you open it, it's best to use them within three or four weeks if you keep them in the refrigerator. Once they're opened, you gotta eat them, so make sure that you're not can or pickling a whole ton of them. Um, you know, in a big jar, because once you open them, you don't want them to go bad. So I typically go with these smaller jars. That way, if we, if we open them and, and uh, don't feel like eating them for a while, you know, you don't feel nearly as bad letting a few go to waste. So now in a, just a saucepan, this is not the canning process. We're going to put our wet ingredients here. We got our two cups of distilled white vinegar. You're gonna bring this to a boil. You want the brine to be boiling because it's going to help preserve the beans. We got our two and a half cups of water. Then you're going to need your quarter cup of salt. Got a quarter cup of salt. And then you're going to need just a pinch of red pepper. I'm not really gonna measure that out. Just you know, a pinch, about a teaspoon. Then you got your dill weed here. I'm just gonna shred this up and make sure there's nice fine chunks. And you're gonna put the dill weed right into that. Then you got your garlic. I put it in whole, you can mince it if you want, but um, I find that it's better to just put it in whole because you're actually not going to put it in the jars. You can, but I find that really takes over if you leave it in too long and it just tastes all like garlic. So I actually leave the garlic out and that's why it's easier to pull it out when it's done. All right, so now what we're gonna do while we're waiting for the brine to begin to boil is we're just going to pack our jars. You do, again, want these raw, so make sure they're nice and raw beans. Do not blanch these. It's going to preserve the texture quite a bit more um, if, than if they were cooked. Now, you want to make sure, obviously, that the beans do not come above this, uh, this bottom ring here. So any ones like this one it's too tall. We're gonna have to take it out and just trim it a little bit. Just give it a little pinch there. And um, there we go, now it's gonna fit. Just keep pushing these in here and packing them in and uh, <laughs> trimming the ones that are too tall. All right, so now that we have the brine at a boil over here, all we're going to do is we're going to take our jars. We have all of our jars finished really nice. I didn't have enough beans, so I had to do some cut beans. But as you can tell, look at the difference. I mean, really, you can tell the difference. It looks so much nicer. So uh, we're going to just take the brine and fill it up here. Now, you don't want to go, also, you don't want to go above that line. See, here's one that I already did. That bottom line right there is the uh, no-go, it's the no, do not pass sign on the mason jar. So do not pass that line because it really allows you to uh, 
take out the air when you can. If you go too far, it's going to, um, it's going to not seal properly. Now what you want to do is, now that you have them all filled, you want to take something rubber. Do not use a metal knife. I see that way too often. You want to use something rubber so it does not scrape the uh, glass. And you want to just work around each one of these to get all the air out. And it's a little bit easier to get the air out in these, in these ones that are standing up straight than it is all these, these uh, beans that are just kind of thrown in there, um, these cut ones. So you want to make sure that you do that because then you'll notice that oftentimes the air will leave and you'll have to fill it with a little more brine because the air obviously take up, takes up space and also harbors bacteria, which you do not want. All right, so now that we have them all filled and the air is all out, you want to take a dry dishcloth and wipe the outside edge here. So that's kind of floating a little bit. The beans will float. That's fine. They're a little bit buoyant. Wipe the edges. Wipe the edges. All right, then you're going to take a, san a uh, sanitized lid and a sanitized ring and, uh, oopsie, <laughs> and put it on. Now, do not wrench it down. We always talk about this, do not wrench it down. Simply take two finger strength and turn. So we have our water boiling here and it's just going to be over the tops of these jars. The jars are going to be warm since you did pour boiling brine into them. So you do want to use your jar grippers and place them into the water here. Now you see how the water is just at, uh, at the line of the jar. It's not yet over it. That's fine. Once we put the other jars in, um, if we see that it's still not over it, uh, over the top of the jars, we can add a little more water. But you'll find that as you add water, the, the jars will take up volume and it'll push the water level up, usually over the jars. Then you just want to put a lid on it, let it sit for 10 minutes. No more, no less. 10 minutes is going to be fine. You just want to get that air out and it's going to heat up the jars, heat up the brine, heat up the beans, and it's going to sterilize everything once more and it's going to ensure that your beans are going to last quite a while. And 10 minutes is up, so we're going to Take off the lid and now we're going to remove the jars from the hot water bath here. Just give them a little tip to get the water off the rim or off the lid. And again, I cannot stress this enough. If you do not have these jar uh, graspers, you definitely got to pick them up. Um, pretty much any big box store will have them in their canning section. They are so handy that um, they pay for themselves easily within one time of canning. So now that you've taken them out of the bath and they've cooled, you want to let them cure for about two to three weeks. That's going to let them ferment and really take on that great pickle flavor. It's going to infuse the beans. And so you don't want to touch them for about two to three weeks just so they have that rich flavor. So don't touch them, get your hands off. I know it's going to be hard, but it's worth the wait. And these beans will also last for about a year. I would not go past a year just because they've not been put into a pressure canner. And so the risk is a little higher with these, even though they do have a brine, it's not something I'd rather take a risk, but trust me, they're not gonna last a year. They're going to go so quickly because they're delicious. Now the very last method of food preservation is freezing. This is by far the easiest method because it only takes a couple minutes and the freezer does the rest. However, one thing I do want you all to take into consideration is that if you're trying to be more self-sustainable and get off the grid, um, kind of remove yourself from the dependence on other people, you do realize that it's going to take a freezer. So as long as you realize that, you're gonna be fine. Because if the freezer goes down, your food's gonna spoil, just plain and simple. So now that your water is up to a boil, take your beans, does not matter what kind. I have just some a mix here of flat green and yellow beans. And you want the water to be boiling because you, once you put the beans in, it's gonna knock the temperature down. So make sure it's a pretty nice rolling boil. Also off to the side, you wanna make a, uh, just a tub, just a wash tub or something 
with ice water in it so that once they're done blanching, you can stop the cooking process by putting them in the ice water. And really all that we're doing with this, this is, the, uh, this is just the easiest way to preserve the crispness and the color because it's really going to, um, it's really going to be very minimal. All we're doing here is removing the enzymes, which would turn them brown once they're in the freezer. So by boiling them for about five minutes, no more than five, probably between three or five, you'll notice when you uh, pick them up with a fork and they're too hot to, to hold on to, that's when they're just perfect. Um, obviously, you're going to want to take them and strain them. I like to move them from a colander into the into the boiling water because I can just take the boiling water, pour it into a colander and I don't have to dirty as many dishes. And uh, you're going to want to take out the hot water because you don't want to put the hot water into the ice bath because that'll defeat the purpose. So now that we have the beans done, we're just going to pour them into a colander here to drain off the water. Be careful that steam is hot. Just going to get all the water out. And then we have a just a, a tub of ice water. And we're gonna take the beans, just dump them right in the ice water there. And get your hands and stir them all around to chill the beans. Stops the cooking process. And as you can see, preserve the color, but the beans are tender. And uh, all the enzymes have been cooked so that the beans will retain that color for months upon months upon months. And all we're going to do is we're just going to fill up our our freezer bags here. And I got a little trick to getting the air out of the bags because the, the air in the bags will um, will lead to freezer burn and that's not necessarily the most pleasant thing to have on vegetables. So I like to fill my bags about halfway, a little more than halfway, I could go a little more. There we go. Give them a shake, zip them about 90% uh, of the way. Um, so there's about an inch left on the bag. Then all you do is put it flat squeeze, shake them down, squeeze, and zip. And now your freezer bags are sealed so there's no air or very little air to spoil your produce. And also, you can then work them out and they stack a lot easier in the freezer that way. So there you go, there is three methods for preserving the harvest of beans and I hope you all will try either one or all of them. It's a great way to really preserve the freshness of your garden rather than supporting something that's been shipped thousands of miles, frozen at your local grocery store and wait for you to buy it. And this is free from the garden and I really would encourage you all to at least try it once. It's something that I personally cannot shy away from and I have to have my garden fresh beans year round and this is one way that I can do that. So until next episode, this is Luke from My Gardener reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll talk to y'all later. See ya. Bye.